So, most of us know how to ride bikes or drive cars or fly planes, right? But how does one fly a rocket, better yet, a spaceship filled with astronauts headed straight for Mars? Welcome to the STEM. Let's get our rocket licenses. Like any vehicle, rockets are designed to keep astronauts comfortable, let alone alive. But today we're not just going to be talking about any average rocket, we'll be talking about what would be the most powerful rocket in the world. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS. It's powered by a series of four RS-25 engines, commonly known as the same engines used on the space shuttles, along with two solid rocket boosters, and sitting atop the SLS is the Orion spacecraft the capsule that the astronauts would sit inside. All of this adds up to give us our ride to Mars. There are many spacecraft being proposed to endure a round trip to Mars, such as SpaceX's BFR. Well, you can figure out what that stands for. But more importantly, there are many ideas being thrown out there, like docking with a habitation module for astronauts to live in on a trip to Mars, or launching a tanker to refuel ships in space. But before we put our seatbelts on, why are we going in the first place? Well, if we look at our place in the solar system, we sit right in between the orbits of Venus and Mars. But you don't hear any talk about humans going to Venus. Why? This is Kenny, our solar system test dummy extraordinaire. Wait, what'd you just call me? So Venus is a killing machine, mainly for three reasons. Did you just say killing machine? First off, the surface temperature is 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa, what? What are you doing? Also, Venus's atmospheric pressure is 90 times that of Earth, which basically means you'll get instantly crushed. And finally, the cherry on top. No, please, I don't even like cherries. It rains sulfuric acid. <laughs> look, look, pal, I'm, I'm really sorry about- Oh, I know, this was a science, right? Does this look like science to you? Because I obviously wouldn't know. Okay, so, Venus, bad idea. But what about Mars? Well, what better person to ask than the one actually going there? Not you. Hey, Abby, how's it going? Hi, Lee. This is Abigail Harrison, commonly known as Astronaut Abby. She founded the Mars Generation when she was 18 years old, which is an organization serving as an advocate for STEAM, that's science, technology, engineering, art, and math. More importantly, the Mars Generation is already preparing kids and young adults for humanity's journey to the Red Planet. So considering I may be talking to the first person to set foot on Mars, why do it? Why do you, let alone humanity, want to take on this mission? That's a great question. Um, so one of the reasons why I want to be the first person on Mars is that at heart I'm an explorer. And so I have this desire to go places that have been, never been gone before. When we go to Mars in 10 or 20 or 30 years, however long it takes us, we're going to need just enormous amounts of engineers and scientists and um, technicians and all of those types of people. And so the Mars generation is trying to look at the long-term goal of both the United States and the world and help young people today decide to go into those fields and then support them in how they can be successful. Future Mars-bound astronauts will undergo many years of rigorous training. Imagine spending seven months in a capsule traveling to Mars and then living on the planet for an entire year then returning back to Earth for another seven months, all while being surrounded by the same people in confined spaces. These astronauts must be prepared physically, mentally, and most importantly, socially. There's no time for office drama in space, let alone on another planet. Once the future Martians, the SLS rocket, and the Orion spacecraft are ready to go, it's time to launch humanity on its most ambitious mission yet.
Now hold on. Before we do anything, let's go back to where we first started. How the heck do you fly one of these things? So it turns out that the astronauts inside don't necessarily do the flying. The mathematicians and the physicists do before the rocket even launches. Let me explain. When you drive a car, you're constantly shifting your course due to traffic, for example. In space, there is no traffic. The spacecraft only needs to worry about its velocity, meaning its speed and direction. Also, since there isn't any air resistance in space, there's no need to constantly have your foot on the gas like you would while driving. But Orion would need to travel at 20,000 miles per hour to Mars. How do you get something that fast without burning a ton of fuel? We would have to use the moon. This is Dr. John Hewitt, a physics professor and former researcher at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. The, the most direct path to Mars that involves the least amount of rocket fuel takes you about two and a half, three years, um, which is a long time for astronauts to be stuck in space. And so engineers at NASA have tried to work out much quicker paths that involve some of these gravity assists. To take from the Earth's orbit to the orbit of Mars, uh, the idea is that you'll, you'll change the velocity of the spacecraft and uh, to do that, one of the ideas was to actually enter sort of close to an orbit around the moon and uh, slingshot around the moon out to towards Mars. And you can have these paths be almost within a year. Um, so this would be a much, much more efficient way to get people to Mars and back. Getting to Mars is just the beginning. Until the projected launch date sometime in the 2030s, we need to figure out how to land, survive, and relaunch astronauts back to Earth safely. From technological advances over the years to just the spirit of human exploration, flying a spaceship to another planet will soon be as easy as riding a bike. Remember to hit the like button below, subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash the STEM series, and tune into Spinnaker Television for future episodes. Let us know in the comments if you'd ever go on a trip to Mars. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on the STEM.